Testing of enterprise changes are costly and difficult tasks for IT organizations. In this video, we will see how an IT team at the fictional outdoor equipment retailer, the Sample Outdoor Company, can meet these challenges with IBM Infosphere Optin Query Capture and Replay for DB2 on ZOS, also called Infosphere Capture Replay. When organizations introduce enterprise changes to their database systems, it is hard to know how they will impact business applications. Consequently, before making changes to a production environment, they need to test the changes carefully to ensure that no service disruption or performance degradation is introduced. Issues like these might result in costly rollbacks to restore service. Even worse, it might cost them to miss customer service level agreements, negatively impact customer satisfaction and lead to loss of business opportunities or revenue. IT teams need to create and run reliable, efficient and comprehensive test workloads that simulate production. This can be a time-consuming, labor-intense and costly process. In fact, automated regression tests commonly cover only a small fraction of the production workload, and sometimes they do not include the right mix of application stacks, such as web servers and application servers, or the number of users that are normally encountered in production. To help organizations meet these challenges, IBM has developed Infosphere Optim Query Capture and Replay for DB2 on ZOS, a web-based tool that lets you capture production workloads, replay them in other environments and analyze the impact that enterprise changes might have. Let's see how the IT team at the Sample Outdoor Company uses Infosphere Capture Replay to efficiently validate planned changes to their database production environment. In this scenario, the IT team needs to upgrade the db 2 for zos server on production from version 9 to 10. As part of the migration assessment, Shelly, a DBA with the company, sets up a test LPAR with db 2 version 10 in compatibility mode and uses Infosphere Optim Query Capture Replay for db 2 on zos to analyze whether there are any relevant workload execution behavior differences. The assessment is performed in two stages. In the first stage, Shelly establishes a baseline to validate that the test environment approximates the production environment. She completes the following four tasks. First, she captures DB2 for ZOS 9 production workload during a time of representative database traffic for the applications that she is interested in. Second, she prepares the DB2 for ZOS 10 test environment by cloning the production database on a test subsystem and by transforming the captured workload to an optimized format that can be replayed on the test subsystem. Third, she replays the captured workload in the test environment. Last, after the workload replay completes, she creates a report to validate replay accuracy and analyze performance differences. In the second stage, Shelly tunes her test database environment and then validates that the baseline workload runs successfully with improved performance in the tuned environment. She completes the following tasks. First, she resets and tunes the test environment. Second, she replays the workload again in the test environment. Finally, she analyzes the impact of the tuning activities. Let's see how Shelly can easily use Infosphere Capture Replay for DB2 on ZOS to complete the scenario. First, Shelly logs on to the Infosphere Capture Replay web console and opens the SQL Workloads page to schedule a production workload capture. She opens the Capture dialog and enters a descriptive workload name. She selects the database type and the production database from her list of database locations. Infosphere Capture Replay automatically detects and lists all the data sharing members. In this example, Shelley wants to capture database traffic on all the pre-selected members of the data sharing group. Infosphere Capture Replay also provides the option to filter the workload collected based on criteria such as authorization ID, client attributes, connection types, and so on. In this migration example, as Shelly wants to include the whole workload, she doesn't use any filtering. She schedules the start time and duration of 60 minutes. Infosphere Capture Replay also provides the option to clone the source DB2 subsystem using a db 2 cloning tool for ZOS and a stored procedure at the point in time before a workload capture is started. 
so that the cloned subsystem can be used when replaying. In this example, Shelly doesn't use this feature now as she will set up the replay subsystem separately later on. She adds a descriptive note to help her identify the workload later. Finally, before she can schedule to capture the workload, she needs to enter user credentials to validate that she is authorized to capture workloads in the production system. This workload is now scheduled to be captured. Later, Shelly checks back to see that the workload has been captured, and then prepares the test environment for replaying. In general, the test environment needs to be reflective of the state that the production environment was in before the production workload was captured. In this example, Shelly has already created her test db 2 for zos version 10 subsystem. Now Shelly transforms the captured workload to a replay-ready workload. She identifies her test replay environment, in this example a two-member data sharing group. She enters and validates the user credentials that will be used to run all captured SQL statements on the test system. She proceeds and provides the required user credentials to confirm that she's authorized to transform the workload. She can monitor the transform progress in real time or review the results after the operation has been completed. After the transform has completed, Shelly replays the workload on the test environment. She verifies that the correct replay location is selected. As Shelly has already set up her test environment manually, she does not select to use a data reset method. She then replays the workload. While the workload is replaying, in and outbound database traffic is automatically captured as a new replayed workload, enabling Shelly to compare the workload execution characteristics of the initial capture with the characteristics of the first replay. After the workload has replayed, Shelly moves on to the Compare and Analyze task to validate that the workload replay characteristics are similar to the production workload characteristics. Shelly now creates a report to compare the captured workload and the replayed workload. The report is used to determine the accuracy of the replayed workload and to identify performance differences. Shelly first validates that the workload replayed accurately. The top of the accuracy report shows the number of unique SQL statements and the total number of times these statements were executed. Shelly notices that all the SQL statements replayed successfully. Shelly clicks the link to drill down to view the aggregated information for each unique SQL statement that ran successfully. The report provides summarized execution information for SQL statements groups, which comprise SQL statements that only differs in literal values. Shelly briefly reviews the transaction level metrics. The transaction replay comparison grid shows information that is aggregated at the transaction level. Next, Shelly wants to make sure that there were no performance anomalies detected. She notices that there is a bit of regression in the response time. She looks at the graphical trends of SQL execution count and number of rows returned over 60 minutes for the baseline and replay workloads. From the performance summary, Shelly can quickly get an understanding of how the SQL execution performance differed between two workload executions. By setting a threshold value, she can easily isolate SQL that has improved or regressed significantly, which enables her to focus her analysis on high-impact SQL. From drilling down into the list of regressed SQL statements, she suspects that the regression could be because the test environment is not yet optimized. With this report showing the accuracy of the replayed workload, Shelly confirms that she has a good baseline for the test environment and she moves on to stage 2, where she will tune and assess the impact that the tuning will have. As part of the prepare step, Shelly uses the DB2 cloning tool for ZOS to reset the replay environment to the state it was in before the first replay. Next, as input for the tuning, Shelly exports the SQL statements that replayed successfully. The exported XML file also includes runtime information, such as number of times the SQL statements were run, as well as some performance data. 
Next, Shirley imports the XML file to Infosphere Optim Query Workload Tuner. With a list of the imported SQL statements, she creates a workload that is then added to the workload list. Next, Shelley invokes the workload advisors to start the tuning process. There are various advisors that can be used to identify tuning opportunities. First, Shelley runs the statistics workload advisor to determine whether any required statistics are missing, conflicting, or are outdated. In this example, the advisor recommends to collect additional statistics. Shelley runs the recommended run stats utility command on the DB2 for ZOS version 10 test subsystem to correct any identified issues. She confirms that the run stats ran successfully. After the first tuning step has completed, Shelley now returns to the Infosphere Capture Replay web console and replays the workload again. After the replay completes, she creates a new report to analyze whether the new statistics had any impact on the SQL performance of the workload. She selects the previously replayed baseline workload and the newly created replayed workload to compare. As expected, the accuracy report shows that all SQL statements replayed successfully. Shelley reviews the performance report which shows that the cumulative response time of the workload has improved, which confirms that the DB2 optimizer was able to choose better access plans based on the updated statistics. Shelley can now continue the tuning process by going back to the Optim Query Workload Tuner and run other advisors. For example, the Index Workload Advisor, which recommends additional indexes. After further tuning, analysis, and then a complete repeat of the assessment in new function mode, without any problems, Shelley confirms that the new DB2 for ZOS version 10 test subsystem can handle current workloads without any problem. She plans to implement the upgrade on the production with great confidence. Shelley is happy that she can easily and quickly assess the migration with the actual production workload. We have seen how Shelley can use IBM Infosphere Optim Query Capture and Replay for DB2 on ZOS to save IT time and resources when validating the impact of planned enterprise changes. Infosphere Capture Replay lets organizations fully assess the outcome of enterprise lifecycle changes, such as hardware or software upgrades, migration, consolidation, retirement, performance tuning, or addition of new applications before deploying the changes to production. The result is a significantly less costly and consistent process for testing. Changes to critical systems can be tested rigorously. Replays can be tailored to meet a variety of test objectives such as performance stress test, capacity planning and growth. With Infosphere Capture Replay, organizations can reduce the costs and the risks of life cycle changes avoid potential service disruption and expensive rollbacks, and meet SLAs for availability and reliability with minimum performance overhead. Infosphere Capture Replay is also available for Linux, Unix, and Windows database servers. For more information about Infosphere Optim Query Capture and Replay and the related Infosphere Optim offerings, visit us on the web at the links shown here.